some say on the spiritual path when the student is ready, the master appears. And in the textual knowledge of Sanatana Dharma and particularly Advaita Vedanta, this is true for the books we come across. And one such book is the Ashtavrakra Gita, which is known as a Nididhyasana text. Now, Nididhyasana means the books that you come across after enlightenment or on the cusp of enlightenment. And I've made many videos on the Ashtavrakra Gita because it is one of the deepest Nididhyasana texts of all. Equal, I believe, with the Avaduta Gita. But many people ask me, what is the central point that Ashtavrakra is trying to make? What is the essential teachings of the Ashtavrakra Gita? Now, a lot of you may have picked up on what the central teaching is throughout this series. But there is an actual verse in this that kind of articulates what Ashtavrakra's point is. And Ashtavrakra actually clarifies what his essential teachings are. So without further ado, My child, you may often speak upon various scriptures or hear them, but cannot be established in the self unless you forget all. Now, self here does not mean ego. Self here means Atman in Sanskrit, undifferentiated consciousness, which is identical with Brahman, the ultimate reality. We are all that. And this is what builds on Ashtavrakar's main point. He's trying to reinforce in our mind that we are all that. We are all the Atman. We are all the self. We are all Brahman. But we forget that we are that. Because of this dualistic world, we buy into the illusion of maya, which means we measure the reality according to our conditioning, our likes, our dislikes, and what we find pleasurable or painful. And then we build a whole reality around that and we superimpose that onto a reality that's actually empty, spontaneous, and free. And so Ashtavrakar's point here is the Atman alone is real. Everything else is unreal. And this backs on to also Shankara's philosophy and Shankara's famous phrase, Brahman is real, the universe is unreal, and the universe is Brahman. Now, likewise with Ashtavrakar, Shankara is talking about how that the universe is only real when we see it all as Brahman. It's only Brahman. But we allow the illusion of Maya in our mind to cut the world up into this and that. And then we think we have this dualistic universe that we live in. But all is Brahman. All is Atman. And we need to see the world like that. And they often use an illustration in Advaita Vedanta of the rope and the snake. And so the nature of this story is that you see a rope, but you believe it's a snake. And so you act accordingly. You act out of fear. You've projected an idea onto what was just a rope. But if you understood it was just the rope, then you wouldn't have any sort of projection of what the rope is because you see the rope as it is and that's it. But you thought it was a snake and you act accordingly. And so this is essentially what both Ashtavrakra and Shankara are talking about is that because of Maya, we see the world as this and that, to use Zhuangzi and terminology. And so we act accordingly. We don't like this. We don't like that. We come into conflict with reality. But Ashtavrika is saying that is the ultimate illusion. The central teaching of the Ashtavrika Gita is that the self alone is real. Atman alone is real. And so Ashtavrika is saying that a lot of us can read the scriptures, but it, we find it very hard to abide as the Atman. The Shruti actually repeatedly says, The self is not to be realized by the power of speech, by a vast intellect, or by the study of the Vedas. So it is more of a question of actual experience rather than intellectual knowledge. Even though we do need a framework sometimes to understand the deeper knowledge, and that's where Advaita Vedanta philosophy comes in and is beneficial for all of us, but we can't be so bound up in the intellectual sphere. We actually have to experience what they would call gnosis in Greek and what would be called actually jnana in Sanskrit. And so that is what is jnana yoga or what we refer to as jnani, someone who is an enlightened sage. So it is more of a question of actual experience rather than mere intellectual knowledge. We don't need more intellectual knowledge, especially when we already have the framework of Advaita Vedanta philosophy embedded within our mind. We've already have the scaffolding to dive deeper into our spiritual practice. And that's, again, why we do read the Ashtavrakar Gita, because it is a good scaffolding to keep us in that present eternal state of the Atman 
rather than being off here and there within our mind, wandering with our thoughts and our samskaras, our subliminal imprints and mental impressions, our subconscious, basically. And so Ashtavakra is advice here for getting out of just repeatedly talking about the scriptures instead of embodying them, is that to establish in the Atman, we have to forget everything. Now, this may seem extreme, and what does he mean by forget? What does he mean by forget all in this verse? What he means by forget is that the self alone exists. And so to abide in the self, one has to be only conscious of the Atman, and that's it. And one should perceive everything else as the Atman. Do you see here? It's not an ignorance of the world, but it's a reorientation of understanding that within everything is the Atman. Everything is Brahman. All is Brahman and I am that. That old mantra that we need to kind of reinforce in our mind. And so we forget that we are all that, right? Even in the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu reemphasizes time and time again how we forget the Tao. And in forgetting the Tao, we create the world that we have now. And likewise with Advaita Vedanta and what Ashtavaka is alluding to, when we forget the Atman, then we fall into conflict, we fall into the decay of the human species. And so we need to always remember and not forget that we are all the Atman. And so this isn't an ignorance of the world, it's a destruction of the real ignorance, which is the ignorance of the Atman, the ignorance of the ultimate reality of Brahman. Do you see? It's paradoxical. It's not that Ashtavakra is ignoring the world, he is just getting rid of the veil of ignorance that eclipses the oneness of reality that we've all forgotten. And so we have to really understand what this ignorance is. This jiva, this persona system that eclipses our understanding of the Atman and merging our mind into the nature of Brahman. But we get caught up in this illusion and then we forget because I have Jason's problems, you have your problems, and then our problems conflict with each other. Then you have these beliefs, and I have these beliefs, and then they conflict with each other. And then we continually fragment what was one into an infinite amount of pieces. And that's what Ashtavaka is trying to put a halt to, this constant splintering and fracturing of the world and essentially our mind so that we kind of come back into a vacuum into that ultimate state of Atman. And that's what the essence of the Ashtavaka Gita is, that the self alone, the Atman alone is real. And that's all we experience, but we've bought into this illusion that eclipses the true reality, which embeds into us this unconscious ignorance of the ultimate reality of Brahman. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Mm-hmm.